Welcome back to Barbecue and Bottles. And today we're gonna to be doing a whole bunch of roast chickens. This is one of my favorite memories growing up. My mom used to do roast chickens on Sunday night pretty frequently. So we're bringing that recipe back here but putting a barbecue twist on it. So we're gonna get these chickens hanging up on the smoker. As these cook and render out all that fat, the drippings are gonna come over a bed of potatoes, garlic, onion. It's gonna to add to the dinner. We're gonna get a rotisserie style rub on this. This is gonna be awesome. And again, you can follow along in your oven if you don't have a smoker. You just won't get the same kind of smoke flavor profile, but otherwise it should turn out just the same. So if you're into that kind of thing, stick with us. So to start with, you'll wanna get some fresh chickens. We've got some organic air chilled chickens just from our local butcher, but go to Costco, get whatever chicken you have available. Air chilled chickens are preferred. First step, what we're gonna do is actually just get some seasoning into the cavity here. So we're gonna get out some salt, put a generous amount of salt down into the cavity of the bird. Then we're gonna need some pepper, do the same thing, get that down in there. Be generous with your seasoning. All right, perfect. For the next step, we'll get a little olive oil and just put that on the exterior of the bird. This is just gonna really act as a binder. We're gonna put some finishing salt on the exterior of this one. Now for our finishing salt, this will just add a nice little crunch and texture to our bird. Now, what our, what our butcher did was he just trussed the actual legs here, but he didn't actually trust the wings. So if we're gonna be hanging these in the actual smoker of the barbecue, if we leave them exposed like that, these are just gonna cook really quickly, they're gonna burn. So we wanna truss up the wings here as well. So what we're gonna do, got a little bit of butcher's twine, and I'll just get this under the bird. Go around the wings. This is really simple, there's nothing special to it. Let's do a simple knot here on the top. Doesn't have to be perfect. Try and get the actual wing tips around there as well. And then when you pull your knot tight, it'll help stick it together a little bit better. Perfect. Now, let's get our scissors, trim that off. So we've just finished up trussing the bird. You can see we've got the wings really tight to the body here. And just overall, we've got a tighter shape to the overall bird, and that'll make sure the protein cooks more evenly over the course of our cook. All right, I'm gonna get the next four of these birds done up, and then we'll show you how we're gonna prep our veggies. So we've got some potatoes here, we've got garlic, we've got a Spanish onion, a red onion. So we're gonna prep these to roast underneath that chicken fat and all the schmaltz that melts off, off of that chicken is gonna bring a really nice rich flavor profile to this. So to start, we're just gonna prep our onion. We've cut one end off, we'll cut the other. And we're not going for any type of fine chop here. But we want these to actually be larger chunks because we're gonna be cooking this up over probably an hour and a half to two hours with the chicken. Again, we want larger chunks of onion that'll actually roast away nicely over that time period. So again, we're going for big chunks here, just like that. And then we'll get them into a mixing bowl that we'll mix everything together with. Do the same with our red onion. So we mixed up the onions and not for any particular reason, we just felt, you know, you eat with your eyes first, so it's nice to have a variety of colors here. We've got a variety of colors in our potatoes, We've got a variety of color in our onions, and of course the garlic as well. Now to season this, we're just gonna go in with a little bit of olive oil. Now you don't want too much because, again, all that chicken fat's gonna render down in here and you don't want these to turn out to be too greasy. And we're gonna go in with some freshly cracked black pepper and some freshly cracked sea salt. Perfect, now this is where it'll get a little messy. Just get in there with your hands. Make sure you get an even coating of oil all over the potatoes and the onions. Yeah, and try to keep the onion together. You don't wanna be doing this. Just try to keep it in larger chunks. And again, just so that it doesn't burn over the course of the cook. Now for our garlic. What we're gonna do is actually just cut the tops off of these. So remove some of the excess skin here from the garlic, and then get this placed down in here. 
Don't worry about seasoning these just yet. I'll show you how we're gonna do that in a moment. And this is gonna make some incredibly, incredibly wonderful roasted garlic just to go along with our vegetables. Okay, so to season these, you wanna make sure that each of these are flat because we're gonna pour some olive oil directly on top of each of the bulbs. And that should just absorb down in between the crevices of each of the individual garlic cloves. And that will hit each of these with a little bit of freshly cracked black pepper as well. And some fresh sea salt. Perfect. So we've got our pellet grill warmed up to 375 here. We've got our chickens out. So I'll get the veggies down in here first. Pull out this rack. So I've got the chickens in here hanging and for each of these little metal hooks. We actually drove them down well into the cavity of the bird just so that they hang right above the vegetables here. And again, we're looking for all that rendered fat just to add to a really nice flavor profile to the overall cook here. So now with this closed up, let's get back inside and we'll make that rotisserie rub that we're gonna baste these guys in. So in a little saucepan, we've got one cup of butter. So we're just gonna let this melt down here. Now you don't want this to burn, you just want it to melt down, obviously. And then to that, we're gonna add one tablespoon of sea salt. Now, we're not going with more than a tablespoon of sea salt here because we already salted the chickens and we're using unsalted butter as well. And we're gonna add two tablespoons of paprika. I'll turn this down a little bit just again so that butter doesn't burn. Whoop, that's all right. That'll bring the color to our chickens. Then two tablespoons of granulated garlic. And then two tablespoons of black pepper. Actually went in with a little less than two, just for the same reason as the salt. We already seasoned the inside of the birds with pepper, so I think we're good here. So now we're just gonna let the butter fully melt down here until this all incorporates into a nice little sauce that we're gonna baste our chickens with using a rosemary brush. So now that we've got our baste all ready, we're gonna baste our birds out here. So I've just made a little rosemary brush here and with some butcher's twine, just tied that together. We're just gonna baste on top of our chicken like this. That's gonna add a really nice rotisserie style flavor profile to this cook. And you're gonna to wanna to baste probably every 20 minutes to half an hour over the course of this cook, or until you've actually gone through all of your baste itself. Now I'll pull this out. I'm gonna make a bit of a mess here, but that's all right. We'll get the birds in the back. Now you'll see we also got two of the temp probes into the thickest part of these chickens. And that's right between the drum and the breast. And that's gonna be what takes the longest to cook. And we're looking for an internal of 170 in there. So temp's really important here. You don't wanna undercook chicken. So we just hit an internal temp of 170 on these chickens. So we're just gonna double check that here with our temp probe. Yep, 171, 170. This is perfect. All right, we're gonna get these temp probes off and the chickens off. So while this is still piping hot, we're gonna get these potatoes and vegetables transferred over to a plate here. You want to get them out of the grease. Frankly, there isn't actually that much grease here in the bottom, but you just want to make sure it's out of that grease and we don't get these too greasy. You know, you see some of the onion that broke apart did burn, so that's what you're wanting to avoid. 
Oh, this smells absolutely incredible. So we got these veggies here ready. Just look at this garlic. This is all roasted. You can just squeeze it and it comes out. This is just like candy. Absolutely incredible. Mmm. Oh, so good. Okay, now for the chicken. Get the hooks out. So our first step's just gonna be cutting loose the butcher's twine here. Incredible. Now I'm gonna go in for one of the wings. I love wings off these roast chickens. So just look at this guy. Great color. You can see there's some pink that's just from the smoke here. This is totally cooked at 170 internal. Do a little taste test. Mm. Oh, that is so good. I just love that seasoning we put on there. The salt, the pepper, and the smoke from the grill is really, really nice. Mm. Awesome. All right, now to cut into the breast, we'll just cut away the twine from the legs. We'll slice in, I'll show you just how juicy this chicken is. Look at that. You can see it glistening. Just absolutely incredible. You can dip it in here. Oh, wonderful. All right, I'm gonna slice this off. This brings back so many memories from Sunday nights, eating dinner with the family. Oh, this is absolutely incredible. And again, you don't need a smoker for this. You can do this all in your oven. And it's super simple. It doesn't take a lot of prep time. This probably took about 90 minutes worth of cook time. And we've got a full meal and meal prep for the entire week. We're gonna give a couple of these ways to our friends and there you have it. Mm. Just look at the moisture in that bird. This isn't dry chicken, this is just absolutely perfect. Now the family's dying to eat this, so we're gonna wrap up the video. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps us with the YouTube algorithm if you smash that like button. Consider subscribing to the channel for more simple recipes like this one to come. Thanks for tuning in.